Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. This live webinar will focus on how to manage your open trades and open setups as well. Nenet and I will be presenting this uh, topic in just a second. First of all, though, be aware that this webinar is shown to a global audience, yet may not be suitable for everyone. Take a look at this link, admiralmarketsglobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact the appropriate entity for more information on that. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and is for informational and educational purposes only. And by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer, plus you're aware of the risk involved when trading. Alrighty, folks. So we can start to kick off this webinar. My opinion uh, on the trade setup, basically there are six phases of a trade. Uh, perhaps if you saw our webinar or seminar in London last week, you already recognize these steps. Analysis is step one, then basically setting up the setup, making the plan or waiting for a decision zone, however you want to call it, is basically uh, the moment where you show patience where for price to initiate what you're looking for. And when price does that, does follow the steps and you know th the things that you're looking for on the charts, then that will lead to the entry, step three. Then the trade management, of course, step four, eventually we'll have the exit and then the feedback and evaluation. So this is kind of the life cycle or the flow of a trade. Uh, and uh, you could make it longer or shorter perhaps, but we found this to be well balanced. And I think uh, it's intuitive and makes sense. So obviously uh, we're gonna be focusing on the second and fourth, what to do when the trade has not been initiated or you have not entered the market as yet. And what do you do when you have entered the market? How do you manage that trade setup? That's the focus of today. And this is really a topic that we can talk for hours and hours. So mind you that we're going to be focusing on some details and you know we can really uh, go quite deep into this topic. But we're going to give us some we're going to give you some feedback what we think on this on these two topics. All right, first the open setup. The open setup basically uh, how, of course, will you tackle the market? How are you going to approach the fact that there could be a pair that's interesting? Obviously, when you make the analysis, uh, typically most traders do look at a couple of currency pairs or maybe even more than that, maybe even a dozen. So when you do the analysis, then basically you kind of narrow down that list typically. Maybe there's one pair that you like, two pairs or three, or maybe there's a certain time frame that you find interesting. In any case, the analysis helps us, of course, make a decision about which currency pairs and time frames we monitor. Uh, because obviously it will be too much work to, to keep an, a constant eye on everything. Eventually, after a few hours perhaps, or a few days, depending on how you trade, you might want to revisit all those pairs and see if ha has anything changed. Can I remove anything to my list of interest or can I add something? Uh, but once you have a list of pairs and time frames that you find interesting, well, then we'll be monitoring only those for at least a while. Let's say I'm trading uh, the four-hour chart, right? So I narrowed the list down to the euro dollar and pound dollar, uh, and the others I kicked out. So perhaps one week later, right, I will look, revisit all those pairs again to see if anything changed. But within that week, I just stick to the euro dollar and pound USD. I just uh, only look at those and see if my setup indeed is triggered. Now, when is a potential setup triggered? What I do is then I look at a zone of interest. For instance, if I draw a fib on a swing high, swing low, and I decide beforehand that I'm looking for price to get back to the 50 fib, then I'll keep looking at the chart basically or set an alert. Um, you could do that too for the 50 fib or close to the 50 fib so that when price gets there, that's the moment that I'm interested. If not, then I'll keep waiting. That's basically the, the zone of interest. Anytime that I say price has to get here or break this trend line or go to this fib or hit this parabolic before I even think about trading it, that's what I mean with the zone of interest, a decision zone or decision moment. So most of the time I'll be waiting for price uh, for that to happen and uh, I'm not going to 
jump in the market until that happens. I don't want to chase the market. A lot of traders, I think, get kind of caught or stuck at moments when they jump the gun or chase the market. What does that mean? Jump the gun means that you're jumping into the market too early, anticipating a certain move that hasn't happened yet. And if you're chasing the market, the move already has happened, but you're too late and you kind of enter the market in, in a later stage and often at a disadvantage or a worse price. So if I would use my drawing tool here to give an idea, let's say that I'm waiting for prices move down from here to here. And my analysis said, okay, I'm waiting for price to hit a 50 fib. And uh, jumping the gun would be, for instance, entering already a trade down here because I'm nervous that the, the price might continue lower. That's entering way too early because I said beforehand I'm waiting for the 50 fib. And chasing the market would be if I enter also somewhere down here, but after price has actually made that retracement. Right? So the jumping the gun would be as it's moving up, and chasing the market would be after it hit the fib already and it's moved away from it. Um, so that would be kind of too late in a way. So key is to plan the trade and trade the plan. Now, one thing I should, as a side note here, I should mention that just because price has bounced off the 50 fib doesn't mean necessarily it's too late to trade. I often wait for price to, to show a candlestick pattern at the 50 fib, and that's fine. Point is that whatever you decide beforehand, how you want to trade it. If I say I want a candlestick pattern at the 50 fib, then I need to see a candlestick pattern at the 50 fib before I trade it. That's what I mean. So if you then don't take the trade and you see a couple of candles move away from it and then decide to enter, that's chasing the market. So I hope that's clear. If not, let me know uh, through the chat. Please feel free to uh, comment or ask questions. So point is plan the trade, right? We're planning it and then we're trading the plan. Plan trade, trade plan. You probably know that. So some, some tips here, some, some uh, thoughts that I wanted to share with you. Don't let the candle confuse you. If, it's, if the candle is still open, don't consider that as information because the candle can still totally change its character. It might look bullish now, but by the end of the hour or by the end of the candle, it might totally reverse. Be cautious of zooming out and zooming in. If your trade plan is based on the four-hour chart, the information on the hourly or 50-minute chart is not going to help. It could cause confusion. In fact, looking at weekly chart, you know, it's good with analysis, fine. But once you decide to trade it, it, it will not give you any information. So then stick to the four-hour chart or whatever you know time frame you're using for actual trading. Make sure that you know reviewing your your trade plan is okay. Nothing wrong with that. To go through it and make sure that whatever you analyze still makes sense, fine. But you want to be careful about being too impulsive with decisions because if, for instance, my plan is to trade the 50 fib and price is getting close to the 50 fib and it shows a candlestick pattern at the 50 fib and all of a sudden I, I just just feel nervous and I you know, get out, don't decide to trade that trade. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that all gut decisions are, are by definition, not good. Uh, but uh, if, you know, if you don't stick to your plan, then many, you know, you're never going to enter a trade or it's, it's going to always be uh, a very whipsaw effect or implementation of your plan. And that's something that is not good either. So you want to understand why you have that gut, gut feeling, where is it coming from, and you want to maybe think about that information that might be, it might be giving you. But be careful with following it uh, every time or, or too many times, in fact. Last but not least, you want to check when you have an open setup, do I still have enough time for the trade management? Let's say I had a pending order uh, on a short on the euro dollar. And it's already seven hours later. Finally, my trade looks like it's going to be entered. But do I still have enough time after that to manage that trade? Maybe not. Maybe it's just better to delete it. Okay, I had a plan to trade that euro dollar, 
but that was seven hours ago and I don't have time left to manage that trade. So that's something to consider with open setup too. Can I go through with it or is it just better to, because of time, say no, not good, stop. So that's, you know, some, some things you want to think about with, with open setups. I mean, um, there are a lot of issues. There are a lot of things to consider with open setups. But obviously, finally, when we take open setup, then we have an open trade, right? And then uh, we can think about a, a whole bunch of different issues again. In, in summary, I would like to show you this table when you have basically a passive or more active management of your setups or trades. When you're more passive, there is an advantage that basically you cannot intervene in your own plan that much. Or at least there's less excuses to do so. And that's positive in a way, especially for beginning traders or maybe even intermediate traders that tend to kind of mess with, uh, with their trade a bit and uh, do things that in the long run kind of hurt uh, the, the long-term edge there. Passiveness could be good because the pending order is set. The target and stop loss is set. It's a set and forget to trade. That's it. It either goes for a win or it doesn't. No reasons to monitor, no time needed to follow the trade, etc. So that's good. Now the active side has advantages because you can keep uh, the finger on your on the pulse a bit, uh, as as the Dutch say. You can keep uh, a better eye, a better feeling for the setup. So you're more in tune, basically with what's going on right now. The depending order, you know, the analysis could show that the pending order is great at uh, five hours ago. But if you just leave that pending order and you disregard the five bars that five hourly candles that have appeared in the meantime, then you're kind of excluding new information. So with active management, you can incorporate that new information quicker or you I actually I should say there is a chance to incorporate it at all because if you have passive then that's it all the new information that that is available is something that you typically will not then use let's say we have a set and forget strategy euro dollar long four hour chart that's a target that's a stop loss and you know whatever happens in between the entry and the exit all that information is yeah we're not using it Whereas with an active management, then we have the opportunity to, to use it if we find it wise to use. So that gives us more flexibility and therefore we can be kind of lighter on our feet. Do we still enter the market at all or do we decide not to enter? Do we get out of the trade once we're in it? Do we move the stop loss do we, uh, forward as a trail or do we go for a bigger target? So we can play around with these variables a bit more. Never, of course, increasing the stop loss, by the way. And by playing around with these variables, we're more flexible and more adaptable. But because there are so many options, it is more advanced, more difficult, and uh, it's not as easy to implement as a, as a passive approach. So now I'm a bit bigger fan of market orders, as you might know in the live trading room webinars. Just because I like to see how price is moving when it reaches my zone of interest. And I would only put a pending order at my zone of interest, uh, whether it's a trend line resistance or it's a FIB support, you know, whatever I decide or confluence of that, whatever I decide according to my analysis, you know, I, I look for an area. Whatever that area is, I like to see price move to it and see does it still make sense to trade it. Often I like to wait for price action to confirm that zone of interest, you know, waiting just for a candlestick pattern, for instance, uh, is, 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 is mighty, mighty useful. So by keeping an eye on the charts, I think I'm more flexible. But if it's a really, if I'm really confident, if I think it's a really strong setup and there's a really overly clear confluence, yes, in some cases I will use a pending order and just put the order there and wait for price to get there. All right, some variables now for the, for the trade management. How we exit trades, 
you know, it depends a lot on type of trading. Are we trading reversals, trends, or ranges? Are we trading automatic, semi-discretionary, or fully discretionary? As I said, is it active or passive? Our experience level in trading are just a couple of things that are important. And we had a webinar on this actually in October last year. You can find it on YouTube. And we talk about the various ways of trade management. Now, I don't want to dive into that this webinar. I don't want to repeat that. But be aware that these are factors you can think about trade management. What I want to do now is a bit different. I want to talk uh, a bit about trade management uh, from a from a more active perspective, and how you can really try to get and squeeze the most out of an active trade management system or approach, I should say, perhaps or method, right or plan, whatever you want to call it. That is my focus today. It's actually what I wanted to discuss in in London last week. By any chance, if you know, we had a seminar there, F Forex Expo event with Admiral Markets, and we just didn't have time for it. Uh, so now I have the chance to, to dive in more details. So trade management, uh, I like basically to use these things, pivot points, Fibonacci targets. I like to use a, a mixture of confluence. I use, yeah, basically using uh, market orders, market, market exits or pending exits. That means pending exits means stop losses, right? Or take profits already at, at levels uh, defined beforehand. I like to use trail stop losses at certain points, not too quick, not too, let's say, not too regular, but at logical places when the market shows that it makes sense. And I'll dive into that in just in a second, don't worry. But it's not something like a standard thing that I always use each and every candle or each and every 15 pips profit. I will always do that. No, it's a lot more flexible in, in its approach, basically. All right, so basically the, the idea behind it is if a trade takes too long from a time perspective or if price is showing uh, that it's getting close to the target, then I will be willing to move that. So it's all based on time or price movement. All right, the core idea, uh, what I like about uh, the trade management method I'm going to show you right now is that it's flexible. It tries to aim for the motto, let you know, cut your winners, sorry, cut your losses short and let your winners run. And many traders talk about it. I haven't seen many webinars speak about this. I'm sure they're out there somewhere. I just didn't bump into it perhaps, but I don't think there are many. And uh, many, many do talk, the point is many do talk about it, but I don't see a lot of practical examples that are given to implement it. I do think that this is a practical example of cutting losses short, letting winners run. So it all, it all basically boils down to being patient at first with your trade. So the whole cycle is patient, less patient, more again patient, and then again less patient. So it's an on-off, on-off approach, basically. At the very start, we want to be patient because if we just took a trade, there should be good reasons for that trade. We just planned a trade. We just did an analysis. There should be sufficient reasons for us to trade. So we shouldn't be worried uh, about the setup at the beginning, at least. Uh, when we do the analysis, there should be a long-term edge with that setup. So there shouldn't that that should not have changed necessarily uh, when we just entered, especially if we take a market order in the zone of our interest. Now with a pending order, it could be a bit different. If you put the pending order eight hours ago and you see that your 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 entry got hit and because you were at work, so you didn't you didn't follow the market. So eight hours ago, you placed the pending, you see that you got a hit and you look at the market again. Well, that's a bit different because then you, you have eight new bars. So you might want to make decisions, but that's just because you were not able to watch the, the entry being taken. If you're able to see the entry 
take the entry as it happens. Then there should be no reason, of course, to be impatient at the start of the trade. So we have to give time. We cannot just exit a trade uh, without giving that patience because well, we'll never see a trade develop. We'll never see a profit and we'll always be exiting a trade before we know it. So we need to really get to that point of discipline that we are able to monitor the trade, a couple of candles, and not worry about that. And if that does worry you, then think about lowering the risk so that you're trading something that doesn't hurt you when you lose. Go, go, wait, way, way, way lower at the risk. So you get to a point that you feel comfortable with that. All right, so what I do is five to six candles, basically. I'm trying to trade with momentum. I am trading either um, basically pullbacks within the trend or breakouts within the trend. So especially if there's a pullback, for instance, in this chart here at the bottom, if I take the pullback trade anywhere in here, then I have plenty of patience because I know that a pullback can take time and it just does take some time before the market turns around again back lower. So if I take that pullback, five, six candles, you know, I, I definitely have that time to wait, right? And if I take the breakout, then I'm a bit more demanding because if I take a breakout below here, I don't know for sure if we get the momentum continuation. If we do, great. Then I'm not selling at the bottom, right? But if it's just a, a false breakout and price makes a quicker turn than I expect, then I might be selling at a relatively bad spot. So then I don't want to be too patient with that trade uh, because then it might be a false break and I want to get out before I uh, lose the entire risk or, or too much of it. So how do I do that? Well, basically, I use my rule of candle counting. As you can see here, all these candles at lower lows and lower highs, most of them. When five to six candles don't break the low in bearish momentum or the high in, in bullish momentum, then that, that impulse is finished, completed, over. And we often get a consolidation zone of 13 or so candles. And this is about 13 candles, as you can see, the, the consolidation zone. So if I take a pullback, uh, around here, because then my time rule says that there's a good chance of price continuing lower. Then I'm going to give it five to six candles to continue making low lower lows. And as you can see from here onwards, most of these candles are showing a lower low. There are a few exceptions. This candle with the red arrow, this candle with the red arrow, and this candle with the red arrow. But that's only one or two candles. As I said, I would give it five to six candles time. And if it fails to post a lower low in five or six, then that's when I run out of patience. So an entry here uh, upon the pullback would have been plenty of, you know, we can see all of that time there was plenty of push lower according to the time rule at least, to stay in that trade and remain patient. So there was a separate webinar on counting candles, how I do it at least. So you might want to check out YouTube channel of Admin Markets on that. With a breakout, same thing. If I take this breakout here, I need to see candles within five to six keep pushing. Because if they don't, well, that's a, that is a dangerous sign that the breakout might, need, might not be working out, might not be as impulsive as I expected. The market is showing some significant indecision. And an indecision with a breakout is not good because when we have that, there's a good chance that that will lead to some kind of retracement or reversal that could knock us out. And you know the trend might still continue after that, but the retracement, who knows how deep it can go. We don't want to hang around and stick around and see what happens. No, especially not with the breakout. So patience, patience at the start. And that's difficult. I know at the beginning, 
uh, when you're not used to it. Uh, you know, so many traders looking at an hourly chart, four-hour chart, then looking at zooming in, see what's going on. It's tempting to know what's going on, but doesn't help us. If I take a trade on a four-hour chart, what what five-minute chart doesn't matter to me. It doesn't impact. Should probably not impact unless you have a specific rule and you tested it, and you know that's fine. But if you have a four-hour setup and you don't have a specific trade plan that says go to the five-minute chart, don't do it because it's just going to mess around with your mind. All right, but there is a point, right, that we want to lose that patience. We, want to, we don't want to be patient forever because then um, we'll be hoping that the trade goes our way. And that's the point that's not good. At the beginning, it's fine to be patient because we're basically have an edge and we're in, we're in control of the situation, let's say. But if it takes too long, then... Basically, we're just becoming hopeful traders. That's not good. So there is a moment we want to say, okay, I'm going to take a market exit. For instance, with five to six candles with a breakout. Don't break the low here in a bearish breakout. And the trade is not into profit or is, is um, hanging around zero. Market exit, just exit right there. That's what I do at least. I'll tell you about my experiences. If the trade is up a bit, or if I'm trading a pullback, for instance, and uh, I see significant failure to, to continue, let's say, for instance, I took this pullback right in here, right? But around here, five to six candles don't, don't break the low. I might not take a market exit. I just might move the stop loss to break even right above this top. I might trail stop it. Or I might move it a couple of pips in, in the loss, but I just use the, the highs here, right? And trail stop it. Trail stop a strong candle high, or I trail stop a fractal to reduce the risk. That's fine too. So basically, if I'm small loss or break even, I'm going to exit, especially with a break, breakout, but also with a pullback. But if I'm up, if I'm in positive territory, then I can use the trail stop to reduce the risk. Or, or just go to break even and have a risk free trade. If it goes, great. If it doesn't, I'm out four, zero, or uh, or just just a tiny loss. Fine, it doesn't matter. So eventually, we want to become more demanding. Cut that loss short. Right, five to six candles. That's what I do. Now that's a. I should note though. Five to six candles uh, is, uh, is, is, a, is a typical rule of thumb. There are going to be cases, exceptions, where I, I think that this consolidation uh, could, could last a bit longer and still continue. But overall, the most pleasant, my ideal situation is that I'm at break even. When five to six candles fail, I just move to break even or reduce the risk, and then I can still let that trade go, uh, and I'm not you know, risking that much. Or nothing that's the best so moving to break even uh, is uh, basically ideal but let's say we reduce the risk to five pips once we do that the next step obviously is to move it to break even uh, that could mean as, as price shows fractal or shows even more movement into our direction we can then bring it to uh, to break even and fully get the risk off the table what I, what I, when I choose between reducing the risk to a few pips minus or break even, I let the market speak. If there's a good reason to have a, a stop loss that is still a bit into negative territory, I do that. It's okay. All right. If there's a good reason to put it at a break even because I got like a fractal and I got a strong candle, even better, right? But I'm not going to force the issue. I don't have to move it to break even necessarily if it doesn't go along with the market structure. If the market says, place a stop loss here, although it's a few pips loss, fine. I'll find a later, a point later in time to fully move it out of the risk and fully move it to break even. So that's step three. Once that has happened, and I got a break even or a very small loss, I become patient again and let the winner run. I want to have a chance to get a home run or 
you know, a good hit into the into the into the park as baseball, perhaps you know, where I want to have a serious chance of getting a, a good reward there. The thing is that when we survive these first few steps and we have some profit on the table, many traders get nervous and take the, the trade off the table because they want to lock in, just grab that you know number of pips. And they get a one-to-one -one trade or you know, something like that. And that's great. Nothing wrong with a one-to-one -one trade. The problem is if we do all if we always do that, then we're going to have an equity curve that is going to be, you know, not going in a in a good impulse. It could be a plus one trade, you get a minus one, and then we get a plus one and a plus one, but then we get a minus one and a minus one. So it doesn't give that boost that we would like to occasionally see at least. And you have to find, of course, and think about where your weakness is. Sometimes being patient when you're up in profit is your weakness. Other traders have patience when the trade is in minus. Everyone is going to have their own kind of vulnerability. So making sure that you have good rules, especially for that part, is very important. Many traders do suffer, though, from the you know lack of confidence basically to let their winner run right but if you're already your trade is ready to break even what's there to lose okay a couple of pips yes but how about that potential to not win 20 pips but how about the potential maybe to win 100 and get a four to one trade what would that do with your equity curve keep in mind that traders generally and this depends from trader to trader but generally speaking become more conservative when they're up in profit and more higher risk seeker when they're down in a loss keep that in mind Let's try to keep a bit of that risk seeker mentality even if your trade is up in profit so that you get one of once in a while at least a, a bigger bigger win and when your trade is down a few pips try to be sometimes a bit more conservative to counterbalance that because naturally we tend to be a bit more risk seeker when the trade is a bit down and it's so difficult apparently so difficult for traders to accept a loss of a couple of pips but who cares if your risk is 50 pips and you lose four pips who cares it's a four pip loss absolutely insignificant if you're if you have good risk management right because if you risk one percent or half percent of the trade those four pips mean nothing it's only our mental kind of evaluation that says it's a loss, but it's almost break even. Don't, don't worry about it, right? So if we think about that and, and correct our natural kind of approach, psychologically speaking, to trading, I think we would get the mentality of cutting losses short and letting winners run. Because if one of the five trades that's a lot, I know, but I mean, or even one in, a, in eight or ten trades is one of those big runs, let alone one out of five. Then uh, it's going to be great for the equity curve. If we get a one trade, that's one, an eight to one reward to risk ratio. Can you imagine if you get uh, a, a loss, half a, half a loss, and then a full loss, but then you get a five to one win. And you get a 0.25 loss and a 0.25 loss, but then another three to one win. Now compare that to the same losses, for instance, but just half of those wins. Well, that equity curve obviously is, is going to be uh, a lot more corrective. Now it's, so letting the winner run to sum it all up is that patience that we have to say, okay, great, we got a bit of profit, but I'm going to risk that profit. I'm already at break even, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm going to risk a bit of that open profit and not take the one to one, but aim for three to one. So that's fine at the beginning. You want to be patient with that at the start. But here too, you don't want to do that forever either. We want to still be realistic. If the market is pushing, right, and it's in this example here, to keep, keep with this example, if the market is pushing, 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 that's great. We know that it's pushing. We can we can let it run. 
fine. But eventually we want to be also more demanding. We don't want to do this forever because we know that the market will eventually hit a point that it will not continue and uh, will turn. So we want to also at one point say, okay, this is enough. If we're up four to one, three to one, or we we hit a confluence zone of support or resistance that is very strong, then you want to then you want to switch it again and think, okay, how do I squeeze the most profit out of this, right? Because if we're up 100 pips and we're like so close to this Fibonacci target, you might even want to take the profit right there. If your if your risk was 30 pips and you're up 110, why not take the profit? Or take half of the profit and let the other half still trail stop. Um, at one point or another, you want to identify an area, though, that you want to become more demanding. That could be time. That could be time. So five to six candles, not breaking the high. Okay, time to trail, time to exit right there. That could be a target. It could be a strong fib level. Trail very, very tightly or get out right away. Trailing tightly could be done by trail stopping candle ho candle lows or highs, fractals. Well, I don't use fractals actually with, with tight, tight, loss, tight stop losses. If I want to squeeze the most profit out, it will probably be a candle high or low. Or I will even zoom in a time frame. If I'm using a one hour chart, I would zoom into the 15-minute chart and trail stop candle lows or highs on the 15 or fractals on 15-minute to get the most pips out of that impulse. So it's like a harmonica, right? Patience, less patience. Start with patience for, for a while, then move to break even, be less patient, move to break even. Then become patient again, let the winner run, then become less patient. Now, let me, um, and there's a difference between breakouts and, and bounces, as I already said, bounces more patience. So let me dive into, uh, I know I you know, went very much into detail about this patient stuff, and I just want to give you one example, and we're going to hand it over to, to Nene, because I'm stealing a bit of his time here. I just want to show you a practical example of one aspect of that. All right. For just a example sakes, okay, let's say I took a reversal trade up in here. I see 21 EMA down, price below it, hitting back it, and then turning against again. Whatever, doesn't really matter. I just take an entry right there. Okay. Entry is here, put the stop loss above the fractals for just this just for informational example sakes, right? So, uh, on this euro dollar one hour chart. So at the beginning, I'm patient. A couple of candles. Let me zoom into that area because you cannot see it too well, probably. There we go. All right, this is the entry candle. So, you know, I have a bit of patience, right? The next candle goes my way, great. First candle, second candle, third candle, don't go my way, but I still have four to five candles, or five to six candles, right? So I still have the time. And the fourth candle does break the low. Great. So it's going my way. So again, I'm patient. Patient, patient, patient. Uh, but here, there are you know, a couple of candles that don't go my way. So I have options. Am I in profit? Yes, I am. So I don't have to take out the trade. So I can use trail stop. So can I move the trail stop? Yeah, I can use this fractal. I can use those candle highs. And I can move the trade to break even. Fine. So, because I'm at break even, uh, I could remain patient, right? That's the second step and the third step in once. So, at that point, I see the trade go again my way. Great. I uh, showed patience with the profit side. I know that I was at break even, so I had nothing to lose. And I see that this consolidation zone breaks my way. I had a drill stop here anyhow. And I see it go my way. So, great. Once it goes my way again for the second time, that's typically when I want to squeeze all the profit out as much as possible. So I can do that by either identifying a strong level here, by trail stopping candles or fractals here, and trying to get out somewhere in here uh, wherever it shows a strong level or some time factor, a candle counting that says, okay, that's the end of the impulse. And I'll try to get some of those pips like that. 
That's the most likely pattern. In some cases, I'm even willing to be patient here and a second time and try to catch one more break. But that has to be a very strong trend, strong trend on not only the hourly chart, but the four hour chart at the very minimum. And I have to see definitely that space and a potential to for price to continue that way. Typically, I'll show one round of patience, sometimes two. If the trend is really, really strong. So basically here, take the trade. I see it go my way. I can move it to break even. I'm patient at the beginning that I can move it to break even. Um, when, uh, when I see some signs of some weakness here, great. I have to uh, be more demanding when I see that. Then step three, I can, once it's a break even, I can be more patient because I have a break even. So I wait for the next round that goes my way. When that happens, then I can start to become more demanding. As somewhere around here, it will probably, somewhere, wherever it does turn, you know, at one point it will. And that's where I want to squeeze out the most profit. All right, so hope that made sense, but I'm going to pass it over now to, to Nenet. If you have any questions, though, feel free to use it chat, and I will write back. Thank you, Chris. Excellent presentation. So I will continue with uh, some uh, practical examples. And uh, first of all, I will tell you that you should definitely focus on uh, managing your emotions first. So the first thing you should do is to manage your emotions. Because it's not always, and uh, how time, time goes by, I really noticed that it's not uh, really up to your system or to your method, it's more like how you manage your emotions. Because you can get easily swayed with, uh, with uh, your, your own yourself if you don't do it correctly. I will always stress how important is this market cycle of emotions, because just stop and think about it. Probably so far you have experienced that you had a, a huge success in, in trading the market like let's say five or six days in a row, constant success. But then uh, if you're swayed because of that, you might start to feel overconfident and take trades that will generally, uh, instead of making you profit, they will probably kill all of your profit and uh, make you. The thing is, it's more about market cycle of emotions, and I mean your own cycle of emotions, than it's uh, about your profits. So before you even start to think that you are Superman, that you can deal with every single possible trade, think that you're just an ordinary human being, and uh, that your success will uh, mostly depend on your emotions. Of course, I'm talking now from the perspective of uh, of an older trader, right? Of a trader who's been in the market for like eight, nine years, but uh, I've been trading constantly and constantly and, and watching the market and analyzing the market. Okay, so uh, I think that uh, you are you're on the same path as we are. So basically, uh, you are walking the path toward becoming a proficient trader, or maybe some of you are proficient traders. But the main problem is that uh, don't stop believing in a good strategy or a good system. Don't stop believing. Because you will see that many times you've been right because you followed the rules. And most of the times when you lost, it was not because of your system or because of your money management. It's because you're, you're getting greedy or you don't uh, respect your rules. Most of the time, it will be like that. It will not be about your system, it will not be about uh, how to protect your trades or scale in, scale out, it's because you're feeling too euphoric, you are really, uh, or either you're feared because you might think that your trade will end up in a loss and you start to revenge your trades, doing some illogical trades, so think about it, because mostly uh, longer term trader success will depend on emotions. It doesn't matter. You may be the best analyst in the world. Maybe you will be the best. The, you can predict where the price will go. But you just cannot withstand to lose. Okay, That's a simple and single fact that can determine 
uh, your that can determine the line that lies between you and between your failure and your success. So it's the most single most important part of your trade management, managing your own emotions. When you're happy how you trade, you will probably start optimistic and well, two or three or five wins, it will be enough to be, be euphoric. Then you start to think that you can win every single trade and that is your usually your doom because you will fail. Think about it and you will see that there is a there is huge logic in this. Also when you manage your trade, probably when you are in profit you will be thrilled, right? And as soon as you start to be euphoric, you will probably close your trade. And if you check how many pips you've got, I'm not talking about profit, I'm talking about pips. If you check how many pips you've got, you will probably see that it's much less than you originally intended. Think about it. Is it really because of your system? Is it really because you you are having a bad strategy, or maybe it's because your own emotions do not let you to make a full profit, because you are afraid that your profits may melt. Okay, I know mel uh, watching a meltdown of your own profit is it's not good. It's, it's bad for, for your mind. That is when you need to think about possibly applying more uh, organized rules of money management, possibly risking a lot of profit but uh, still giving you the chance, you will be in a chance to trade cold-headed. There is one particular strategy that you can do, and I will show you that. But have in mind that uh, also you, you need to adapt to it because it's, it's a bit different because you will be always risking some profit in order to make uh, more profits during the longer term. I know it's, it's a bit different, it's a bit hard to comprehend, but Let's let's think about this. Some of you are probably uh, very very happy with making two three hundred pips per week, right? With uh, this kind of approach, you might happen to make a lot less, but you will trade safer. It, it's about you how you will decide about it. But think about this: that the most obvious failure in forex trading is not because of your system or your strategy, it's because of your emotions. Because as soon as market starts to go up, down, up, down without clear direction, you probably lose the track where the market will go when you close your position, then you open another position and you can do it a couple of times, especially if you trade MA crosses, that can be bad. Because uh, trading MA crosses during range bound market is disastrous for the account. So if you see that market is going up, down, up, down, you might start to lose patience. Okay, you might you might feel anxious, and you probably will close potentially good trade and open another trade in opposite direction, just to close that same trade and take another opposite direction trade. It's because it goes like this. First, this is when things are good. When things are getting too good, this is the peak. Now, when things are getting to look uglier, this, this happens. See? Panic. Usually, during panic stage, traders start to make illogical trades. Illogical trades are, you know that market is going down because your system is telling you to do that. But you close your trade because it's nothing happening and market just started to go up. And you think, well, my system is wrong, this will go up. 
and you open uh, a long trade. Then suddenly you see that market is really going down and you close your long trade again in a loss and make another short trade. Well, three consecutive, four consecutive losses will tell you that something is not quite right. How come that you have been so successful with trading all this time and making good profits and suddenly you have a huge streak of losses? Yes, it's the market, I know. But also, it's not just about the market. It's more about yourself. Start fresh and think about it. So this is how you can do it if, you're, if you want to sacrifice profits. If you, if you know that your system is like 70-80% successful, you might start about to think about this strategy. If you think that your system is not that successful, then okay, you might start to, to of course, try to find a good successful system. But the point is, you need to have a good success ratio within your own strategy. It doesn't matter if it's a system, because probably you don't tra trade like a robot mechanically. You make your own assumptions. So if you're 80% successful in picking up your entries, and you should be, because if you follow our analysis, you should be like 80 to 90% successful in picking good entries, then this could be the strategy for you. Because you will be spending 80 or 90% of your time in profit, you might start to think to lock your profit after some amount of pips. It can be 15, 20. For example, I occasionally use 20 with Camarilla MACD and with session recaps. You can do the same. You just need to get accustomed to it. So each time the price goes like 15 or 20 pips in favor, in your favor, you could, of course, move your stop loss to break even. For example, if you're aiming for 60 to 100 pips and your stop loss is 60 pips, once you make like 50, 60 pips, you can move your stop loss to break even. Well, you know, that is the only way you can actually enjoy a free ride 80 to 90 percent of the time, but it doesn't guarantee you that you will have your uh, pips, right? Because very often it might happen that you're in profit and bank, suddenly your protective stop is hit. You don't lose, but neither you win. So this is either a break even or, or, or a win, right? 80% of the time. But, well, I know it's hard because usually we like to close our trades in profit. So once we see that our trades are really strong and going in profit, we take to, we, we, we tend to take the money, close our trades, and say, okay, we had a successful day. But think, if you, if you start to lose with illogical trades, revenge trades, think about locking the profits each single time you make certain amount of pips. That might help you to m be more successful. So it doesn't matter that you are not a successful trader if you are still losing. Because I'm sure that you had winning months. It's just about bad psychology. It's not you know how to trade, you know how to follow the markets, you read the analysis, but you still lose. It's because of psychology. So try to lock the profits once you are in a trade. You will risk 20, 30 pips, but ultimately, maybe you will make like 100 pips per month by using this strategy, that which should be enough to qualify you for consecutive successful trader. So think about it. But you need to have 80, 80 at least 70, at least 70 percent win ratio with the system. Live chart is also now what I will show you and I will show you how I actually manage some trades. 
So let me first open the chart. And okay, you will see that. So first we'll start with dollar CAD. You remember our dollar CAD setup, session recap setup. I actually took like 50 pips, nothing more, nothing less. Well, I saw that some traders took 100 pips. Some traders took 100 pips on this setup. Well, I have taken a bit, well, 50 pips was enough, but still. There was a rejection, we followed it, and what I like to do, guys, is if I trade Camarilla MACD setup, of course, trade by the analysis I make because I take some setups of my own analysis, of course. Now I watch Camarilla historical levels. So once I see these levels, let's say that I, I made a POC on four hour chart, I go to one hour chart and watch his, and I watch historical levels. So if I had taken a short here, I would have counted how many supports are till L3. Because if you know about Camarilla, you know that H3 is resistance initially, L3 is initial support. So if my trade is going from H3 to L3, I'm, I'm counting historical supports. So I, I only watch previous quadrant. So this was previous quadrant. One, two, three. Pivot point is something which I usually neglect because uh, price, if, if it wants to break pivot point, it, it will break it really easily because pivot points are determined uh, for new trades or for uh, giving us a sentiment possible. So once I see that pivot point has been tested here and I have taken a trade here, I, the, the, I don't look at this. I just watch this level, this and this one. So starting from this point, we could have made like 45 pips, 100 pips, or 155 pips. Now you see where the price is, almost 300 pips. Well, the thing is, I took, I took my trade, I took it here. Okay, so I closed my trade here because the price was, see, it went down, then suddenly it spiked up. So once I saw that I was in a profit, I moved my stop loss just to this level after it, this level was break, broken, and I was riding a, a free ride until I was profit stopped. Okay, let's see another trade or the end trade. Or the end trade, uh, very clear, guys. I will sh I will show you. Or the end, bearish equity support the drop analysis. POC, we waited for the price to go here or uh, break because I specifically said, okay, break out a one hour, a uh, four hour close below 80. And what happened is the price, yes, it closed here. So I was watching this support and this support. This support was broken with a high momentum, so I left my final target open and my target was hit. So you see that my target was hit here. See, uh, this was the first target and this was the second target. If I saw that the price is really jittery uh, uh, at this spot here, I would probably move my trade to break even, but because it's a breakout trade, I tend to book profits too. And finally, Australian dollar trade, uh, Australian dollar trade setup here, ascending channel provides buying opportunities. I, I told you that you can, I showed you that you could go long at POC and you indeed could have made a good long position here. Not sure that you actually did, but you could, definitely. And what happened is the price went here. Okay, the price went here. This was the time when the analysis was done. The price went here, started to reject from our POC, look, and then I watch next resistance. So this was historical resistance. Well, it, it was very close, only eight pips. I neglect this. And here I had a good confluence, like 30 pips. Here, at this time, I had another resistance. So 40 pips, 38 pips. So I was thinking if I go long here, I would probably take uh, like 35 pips of profit. 
and I took 30 pips of profit. Uh, the price went down again and went a little bit up. But you see, there is not a, a huge uh, room for the price now to go. It's it just it's been ranging like a couple of days. So you, the most you could make like 50, 60 pips. So be realistic. Don't uh, judge the market where you think it should go. If you see that market is not going anywhere, it's better to close a trade for three pips of profit instead of losing everything. So guys, I hope it helped. Uh, this webinar is being recorded. It will be uploaded. So if you have anything to ask to add, okay, you can do that. Uh, I hope that you had a successful week. Session recap was great. And don't forget to sign up for new session recap and watch our analysis. Cheers, and as always guys, trade safe.